Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. We're going to finish off my uh, South Korean DVD collection here. Now this, this part is going to be probably shorter because I'm just going to be covering my VCDs, which I only have one, and then any, any of the slip cases that I have instead of the DVD uh, cases. So the first one here is one that I have covered in my Asian horror playlist, I think 2007. That is Anonymous Blood also known as Cadaver, also known as Cut. This is a VCD, remember, so it's two discs. You put disc one in, that's half the movie, then you put disc two in, and that's the second half. This one I liked. This is a good movie. One of the ones that I was, you know, I mentioned in my mini-review, I was really surprised it did not get an, an American release. I think there might be an all-region DVD floating around out there, which is probably what I should have gotten uh, instead of the uh, VCD. But this one's good. It's about the medical students that are experiencing supernatural phenomena in the uh, in the morgue, I guess, or the, the classrooms. Pretty generic premise, but this movie focuses so much on the sound design that it uh, it's, it's quite interesting to watch. It's definitely right right down the line in terms of like your typical Asian supernatural horror film, but the overall quality is good enough to, to recommend for sure. So I recommend that. Then we have one that's pretty interesting here. This one, I, I know, I think Kim ki Duk was associated with this, but he did not direct it. I don't know if he wrote it or produced it, one of the two, or maybe both. This is beautiful. Now this one is kind of, uh, this one's a little weird. What you have is a woman attempts to cope with the dangers of being beautiful. Now, there, this is somewhat of a realistic premise, okay? But this is kind of taken to the extreme, where this woman really has to, to worry about being sexually assaulted, like, all the time. Like, that's... So her beauty is, is portrayed in an excessive way to provide for, you know, some interesting scenarios and, and themes. So this movie... You know, definitely has some. Uh, it has a little bit of grit to it. All right, it, it uh, it's not easy to watch sometimes for a handful of reasons. It's not a horror movie. It's a drama, but it's a dark drama for sure. You know, there's some psychological and physical dangers that are expressed here. Um, you know, I think a little bit more could have been done in in kind of exploring the theme, but uh, overall, I thought it was a pretty interesting movie. Just make sure you're you're ready for some stuff that's a little a little hard to sit through. So that's that's beautiful. I enjoyed it. All right, our next film is more fun for sure. And this is another one that I think more people should know about. Dasipo Naughty Girls. So it's like a high school comedy uh, and a musical too. This has some musical numbers to it, some of which are actually quite good and catchy. And, you know, it's basically about a group of high school kids. You got my, my sweetie here, Okbin Kim. And she's, uh, she's great in this. She has, like, this, this very dry, deadpan uh, performance where she's very, like, awkward and shy. And this girl, she's so poor, she has to wear poverty on her back. Literally. There's, there's a small little, like, stuffed doll that represents poverty that's, that, that is strapped to her back throughout the entire movie. Like, that, that's the type of movie this is. It's pretty odd. But I thought, this movie has remarkable energy to it. Like, the first hour of this movie, it just, it keeps, it, it goes. And then it slows down a little bit during the, during the second half. But uh, it's pretty hilarious. I, I really like this one. Definitely a little bit different, a little wacky. I think the ending might be a little bit too silly for its own good. Um, it has some, like, sexy themed comedy but it's not inappropriate sex themed comedy so to speak you know it's not vulgar it's more charming so i really like this and uh Okping kim does quite a sensual dance at one point in it i was like a woman can dance so i like dusty bill naughty girls it's good i covered this one in my asian horror playlist from 2008 i believe is death bell you know this is like you know, some people complain about Onryo ghosts in Asian horror movies, but, you know, the, the theme that they've been really doing a lot lately is the people trapped in a school and dying. I mean, they've done a lot of those movies, too. 
And uh, this is one of the lesser ones. Not very good. I, did, I didn't like it. Kind of shoddy. Not very good execution. I cover it. Check out my mini review in my Asian Horror playlist. Some people like this one, though. This one actually does get some pretty good reviews online. I don't know if I'm necessarily in the minority, but it certainly is a, is a film that is liked enough to maybe give it a shot. I personally prefer the sequel, which I haven't covered yet in my Asian Horror playlist, but I will. All right, our next one here is really good. And uh, this one, let me check the director on this. I think the director was, uh, hold on. This movie was directed by Jin Ho, Jin Ho Her, who's a very good South Korean director. And this is called Happiness. You have the lead actress from A Tale of Two Sisters, Su Young Lim. And then you have Jung Min Hwang, who's an excellent actor who has gotten very popular during the past decade. This is a romance about two residents at a wellness clinic who fall in love with each other. So I think this, this film kind of starts off somewhat conventional. You know, they're either in there for... I think this guy was in for alcohol abuse. He's an alcoholic. She was in there for another reason. And, you know, it starts off kind of conventional in terms of romance, but I think the second half really turns a lot of those conventions on their heads and has some really interesting character interaction that you typically wouldn't see in a, in a film of this kind. There's a... There's one line of dialogue, which I, which I won't uh, spoil for you, that, that's actually kind of devastating. <laughs> that's actually said. Uh, kind of, uh, it hits you pretty hard. And uh, this one, this is definitely a romance that has a little bit of an edge to it. And that's what makes it, well, it's one of the things that makes it really good, I think. I think you should check this out. If you like romances that are a little bit, um, that are impactful and a little bit more serious, you know what I mean? This Happiness is a very good movie. I really enjoyed it. Great performances, no surprise given the two leads. This is one I'm going to cover in my Asian Horror Playlist from 2012. That is Horror Stories. So this is like four, it's an anthology, four films, and then a wraparound segment. All of which are good, some of which are actually very good. There's one short in this one uh, involving two little kids and a mysterious man at their front door. That's outstanding, it's really good. And uh, there's also a zombie short in this that I thought was really good. But I'll, I'll get to some more details in my Asian horror playlist when we get to 2012. There's a sequel, Horror Stories 2, which is also worth watching. Not quite as, as good as this one, but still good. This one's another one that is, I would say, a must-watch. If you're into Korean crime films, like gangster films, you gotta check this out. This is Gangster High. Okay, so you have these high school students, and they have a rivalry or a, you know, with another gang, and they, they butt heads. Now, this movie, I'm just going to tell you, it gets pretty violent. Now, the violence isn't excessive, and it isn't in high quantity. It's really only two or three scenes during the second half that are tough to sit through because... You have well-developed characters. You know, this movie develops its characters very well. The lead actor in this does a very good job of portraying a guy who, they don't show him fight much, but you know he could kick people's rear ends. You know what I mean? Like, you could just tell he, he has that tempered rage within him. And uh, some of the conflicts in this movie are really well drawn. And the fact that these are high school gangsters... This plays better than a, than a good number of the, like the the adult themed, or I should say, you know, typical Korean gangster films. Gangster High, maybe a little bit slow during the opening hour because it sets up a lot of the drama. But man, check this out if you like gangster flicks. It's good, very good. And last, but certainly not least, we have of course one of my favorite horror films of all time. This is the fourth installment of the Whispering Corridors series, and that is Voice. DVD cover art on this all-region version was way better than the American DVD cover art, which just looked ridiculous. If you've ever seen it, it has a girl, like, throwing up blood or something. Like, what does that have to do? Or it has, like, a, a ghost coming out of a girl's mouth. I mean, come on. But 
Yeah, I covered this in 2005 in my Asian horror playlist. An absolutely outstanding movie. I absolutely love this film. The the mythos building and world building it does in this in terms of, you know, the relationships between the ghosts, why ghosts exist, the relationships with the humans. Because your main protagonist in this movie is a ghost. So that's different from all the other installments in this franchise. And, uh, you know, Okbin Kim is in this. She's very good. This is this is just fantastic. I'm going to do a spoiler review on this eventually to, to go through all the details because there's so much nuance and detail to this movie. Uh, it needs a, a spoiler review. So, yes, I highly recommend this. And you can watch the Whispering Quarters franchise in any order. They don't flow in, in one story. They're all independent. So that's it for my South Korean movie collection. And, of course, I'm going to you know add to this collection uh, any... any additions I make to my collections after I'm done with this whole series of videos I'll add in like addendum videos so it'll be an ongoing uh, uh, playlist so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take like a week or two off from the DVD reviews and then uh, start up with my Japanese movie collection now a good chunk of those will be horror movies which we'll get through pretty quickly because of course I'm covering all of my horror movies every horror movie I've ever seen from Asian countries in my Asian horror playlist, but there's going to be a lot of other stuff in there too. There's going to be some classics, some animated films, a lot of, you know, other cult films, genre films, thrillers, romances, dramas, you know, that type of stuff. So, and then after I'm done with that, I'll go through my television series and like anime series, which are not as big as my movies, you know, movie collections, but there's enough there to fill a few videos. So there's still a lot more to come. And uh, as always, I will see you next time.